Okay, hi everyone. This is a brief video on raising sales quotations within SAP Business One. So I have here a training database. And before we get into raising the quotes, I want to show you a function which I think is quite handy. A little thing called My Shortcuts. So I just go to Tools, My Shortcuts, Customize. And within the uh, Customize window here, I have all of my F keys. So that's the F keys across the top of your keyboard. And you can assign to each of them um, a shortcut or a function within SAP Business One. So for this purpose, I've said that F2 relates to Sales AR, and within Sales AR, it's going to go to Sales Quotation. So that's the equivalent of clicking on Modules, coming down to Sales AR, and then selecting Sales Quotation, or using the menu option we have here, which would get us to the same place. The benefit of doing it through uh, the uh, Sales Quotation window um, is that it just saves and clicks. Um, so imagine for a moment that I have a customer on the line and or a prospect for that matter, they um, they want to get a quotation. If I just hold down or click on the, the F2 key, straight away I'm into my sales quotation window. So it really is just saving on keystrokes, but I think it's a handy function. So now that I'm in my sales quotation, I want to start raising a quote, a quote against this um, prospect. Traditionally, we've used an account uh, called Quote. So I just type in the letters Q, U, and O, and when I tab off, it finds that there's only one customer or one account beginning with Q, U, O, so it picks that up for me and brings it in. Um, that's fine. If we want to continue using that, no problem at all. However, I would suggest that we might look at alternatives. So for example, I've set up an account here, which is just double one, double one. And um, that basically comes up with the, with the, with this option that says lead and advises you to change the name here. So basically, it's asking you to put in the name of the individual. If I try to tab off at this stage, or if I try to move on to the next field, SAP believes that I'm actually looking for a customer called John Smith, and it goes off and looks in the business partner list. And there isn't a customer called John Smith on the system, so it's not going to find that. It gives me other options, such as cancelling or creating a new account right now. Don't want to do either of those at the moment. Really, I just want to have the customer, which I'm using for my quotes, which is this one, in this case, a double one, double one. I want to change the name temporarily on this particular quote so that I'm capturing details about John Smith. Um, and I want to continue on from there. Now, SAP is getting in my way. To avoid that, there is a handy function. Just use the control, so the CTRL key, and tab. So that control tab is basically overriding SAP's search function and telling SAP that you want to proceed by using or while using uh, John Smith as the customer's name in, in this one quote. I then put in my customer reference. So I'm advising that the customer reference ought to be the uh, individual's uh, mobile phone number. This is handy for a number of reasons. One, mobile phone numbers tend to be unique to an individual. You generally won't have the same mobile phone number popping up on another customer at any point. Um, I'm sure if you've bought anything or ordered anything from a, a takeaway in the recent past, more than likely you'll find they um, have your mobile or have your number on, on record and will be able to tell you, you know, who you're call, where you're calling from and what the delivery address will be, etc. Something similar along this lines here. Having the uh, the mobile number in there means that I could potentially go and look at a previous sales quotation, just go into find mode here. And if I just type in any part of the um, the account, or sorry, the, the uh, customer mobile phone number, it should bring me back and find that there was a previous quotation. So you can see here, for example, this quote was raised in um, August of 2016. And this was actually me setting this up as a uh, as a quote. So um, that is allowing us to see whether we've had any previous um, correspondence or interaction with this uh, customer or with this, this lead. So I've got my um, mobile phone number, I've got their name. I can now proceed to actually putting in details as to what it is they're looking for in the system. So that's all pretty straightforward stuff. We just basically either put in uh, the item number if we know it, or we can search by uh, the product. So if I look here for um, just anything with the letters air two and tab off and I can find all of the air two items here. So heat pumps and whatever. So I can then also see from this window what units I have in stock at the moment and if there are any commitments on those. So that's just, I will proceed in that fashion then to, to enter all of the details. Um, something that um, I think most people are aware of at this stage, but if we just go into the form settings, there is a function that we might want to turn on here called type. 
which basically just creates a column here that allows me to put in um, a text section at the beginning of um, each area. So on our database, we will typically want to say things like um, the area of the, the property that um, we're referring to as far as uh, equipment is concerned. So we'll just put in a ground floor here and then we can actually put in the items. Now, again, I'm not at all familiar with the item um, range, but if I just actually put in the first few letters, I can then select a, um, a unit and I won't embarrass myself by trying to put in all of the ancillary parts that go in with, with, with that item, um, but I could, I could just pull up a list of, of products here and just for the purposes of getting um, something into the database, we'll just kind of put that in, just put in something that we have in stock. And we can proceed then with the, um, with the quotation. Ultimately, we can then get down to a point where we might wish to enter a subtotal section. So that's going to give us a, a subtotal. And then we can go to text again and enter the, the next area. At the point that the customer's on the phone, we probably won't go through all that level of detail. We'll just try and capture all the items that, um, that are going to make up this quotation. That's going to give us pricing, if I had the pricing in. Um, and it'll give us uh, quantities then. So depending on how many units we require. So if we just put in a quantity times a price, times the unit price is going to give us an overall value. So if I just put in some numbers here, we now have um, values on all those items and we have a total price down here. So we could, as far as raising the quote to the customer is concerned, we could do this presumably while on the phone to the customer. Okay, so that's um, the basics of raising the uh, quotation. You may have noticed that I've created some uh, user-defined fields over here on the right-hand side. Now, on your screen, when you look at this for the first time, you may or may not see this. If you don't, if you see something uh, that looks like this, you simply go to View and User-defined fields, and your user-defined fields then should appear on the right-hand side of your sales quotation. The fields that I've set up here um, have a variety of purposes, and how you use them is to some extent down to yourselves um, but my original intention was that this notes field would allow you to capture additional notes about the person or the project or the nature of the work or any part of the discussion that doesn't really fit easily in the available uh, fields on a, the standard quotation window. So it could be kind of a background as to where they're coming from or history about um, other jobs they've worked on or that you've worked on or any recommendations you might have made to them. Anything really that may be of relevance to you or to somebody else when this person gets back on the phone in two months time and wants to proceed with the job or wants to make further inquiries. It could even relate to just questions they had or Potentially, you could even copy and paste emails or, or, or notes in there. It won't be necessary in the next version of SAP. This is obviously an old version we're on at the moment. Um, the newer versions will have additional functionality, which, which may make a lot of this redundant. But for now, what we have is a notes field here. This field can carry 64,000 characters of text. The field beneath it is the contact field, and we have 200 characters here. So you might ask, why do we need a contact field if we already have details in um, the quote? Well, it may be in a lot of cases that the person you're speaking to isn't the um, homeowner or doesn't isn't actually the person who's going to ultimately buy the solution. Um, it could be that you're talking to their architect or um, a um, heating contractor or plumber or a um, builder or somebody else. So it would be nice to be able to capture con the additional contact information over here. So even though John Smith is the person uh, that we've been speaking to, it could be that it's someone else entirely um, that owns the property where John is looking for the quote. So capturing that information, if it's available to us and if, the, if John um, offers it up, would just make life a little bit easier for us in the future. With the same idea in mind, we also have a user defined field here that allows us to say what type of individual John Smith um, is. So as I say, he could be the architect or the builder, the plumber, uh, or the, ho the owner for that matter, or other. We also then have some fields which, again, may or may not come into um, usefulness. Um, we have a field for stages and we can actually then just say what stage of work um, John or the project is at right now. We also have a budget field here, so um, I don't think this is being used at the moment. Uh, there is the potential to use it, of course. Um, the idea is that 
if somebody says they're they've a, you know a uh, a budget of four thousand euro for their entire heating system, then perhaps this is not the solution for them. The probability of the job going ahead then is also listed here. Again, this is just arbitrary in terms of your best estimate or or your, your gut, I suppose, in terms of how you feel uh, the calls have gone or how you how committed you feel this this guy is to um to the, to, uh, to to going with this solution. Next steps. So the I suppose the default next step is a follow up phone call. Certainly from my perspective, that would be the logical next step. They'll call again in X or you will call them for that matter in uh, X weeks. You leave until they call us. Uh, if this quote uh, becomes obsolete or redundant, we can flag it that it was actually uh, carried forward in a new quote for a reason. Then we have reasons. Uh, we have one. Great. Uh, in that case, the um, sales order or sorry, the quotation rather will be converted to a sales order. If we lost, uh, perhaps we could get information or, or uh, metrics as to why we lost. Was it, what, what was the reason for that, and um, address those. Uh, you know, we, if we can quantify the number of quotes we are losing and the reasons we're losing it, then perhaps we can uh, be a bit more proactive in in winning uh, future quotes. So um, on top of that, then we have um, what I'm calling some filter fields here. The idea with this, or sorry, fitter rather than filter, fitter fields here um, allows me to actually um, classify. So I've said here, if, if, if they already have a fitter, then we can just uh, record that fact. Um, if they'd like some recommendations, I had suggested that we might actually build up a database of um, fitters within our solution. And uh, I've gone some way to doing that. So on the, the business partner records, these are all uh, people with whom we trade. And um, we could then sort of simply classify them or recommend based on area or um, the quality of the work or um, previous relationship or whatever it is. We could rec make recommendations to them as to uh, different fitters that they could choose. So basically, I've just set this up so that there's an, an interaction or a relationship between this field and searching the database for um, people whom we flagged as being fitters. We have another notes field then, um, so similar to the notes field above, we can capture information. Perhaps that might relate to the, the fitters or it might relate to the contract or it might relate to something else. Um, project fields, we haven't really got any much information on this. The idea at one stage was that we would have um, the potential for uh, projects available, um, you know, a, a database of, of projects and then say what, what, you know, what quotes related to that. So this is, uh, I've just jumped to another database for a moment, and um, this database just has some um, additional user-defined fields created on it. And these fields um, were intended to allow us to identify the types of products that the, the quote contains. So when we get a, a list just at a header level of quotes, we can see whether or not they contain these items. We can also see whether or not they have a ground floor, first or second, third floor on them. So it was just a means of rather than having to drill into each individual um, quotation and look to see what information was on the quote, uh, we could have a listing uh, appearing. Um, so just one line for the quote, who the customer is, and then uh, whether or not they had these products or these floors uh, at, uh, on the quote. Um, so I think it works in the context uh, of, of what the guys were looking for at the time. Okay, so I think that covers off uh, enough uh, for this particular introductory session. And if you have any questions from that, uh, please come back and uh, put the comments in the, um, the beneath the uh, the video. Thanks.